Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of the Bengal Tiger Recruiting Podcast. I am Billy Embody. With me is Shay Dixon. We've got a lot to get to on the podcast today. First things first, a new on three recruiting prediction machine pick went in Wednesday morning. Shay Dixon logged it for Denim Springs. Defensive back Deshaun McBride, I jumped on board as well. Um, this is a guy that picked up an offer earlier this month, player we've been really high on, Shay. And um, look, he's a Louisiana kid, makes a lot of sense. But after checking around, we feel really good about where things stand here. I do. Um, and look, I know Sam Spiegelman, one of our on three national guys, uh, put in his pick. Oh, Billy, look at you at the action. I was trying to bring up his profile on my own. Okay, so you see it there if you're watching on YouTube. And if you are, like the video, give us a thumbs up, give us a follow. Um, but yes, the what on the on three industry rankings you see is a top 300 player. That makes him a four star top 10 player in Louisiana. Billy, we've talked nonstop on the podcast. The top 10 to 15 guys in Louisiana and often beyond are guys that are going to get a hard look at LSU, you know, from LSU. Uh, and McBride certainly was that 6'3, 190. Uh, you've already seen him in person this spring, Billy. I think you probably took that photo that everyone's looking at right there and um, thought, hey, look, at this size, 6'3", as a junior in high school, he could put on some weight. He's a strong safety. Could he be a linebacker one day? They're recruiting him at safety. That's where they like him at. I will add uh, that when I look at sort of him as a prospect, one thing I jumped to, Billy, is the production, which it was all state production, over at Denham Springs as a junior broke the school's or excuse me, interception record uh, with nine interceptions on the year, 46 tackles, uh, four for a loss, uh, had almost double digit pass breakups. In addition to those interceptions, four forced fumbles, a couple touchdowns on defense. And now we've seen him with some really solid track times. And I think all of that leads to where we are now. They offer him within the past week. He'll probably be visiting here soon. He's going to take some other visits. Tennessee's in it. Um, Mississippi State and other SEC schools have been recruiting him. But for me, Billy, you've lived here in Baton Rouge. Denham Springs is a stone's throw away. Uh, I cannot see them losing a Denham Springs DB that they really want. And they've offered early in the process. Yeah, I agree. And, and look, uh, he's a guy that if he grew into linebacker, I mean, that wouldn't be a big issue for LSU at all because you've got a guy with an 1109 meter time under his belt. He's somebody that has now displayed the speed that you want to be a high level defender in the SEC, especially at his size. And you mentioned the production on the field. I saw him in seven on seven. I saw a guy that moved really well for his size. He's back there playing safety. Um, but look, I mean, you can slide the a lot of these big safeties down into the box nowadays and bring them off the edge, kind of a la Grant Delpit, you know, things that he did while he was at LSU. And you know, LSU hopes he grows into a guy that you can perform like Grant Delpa did because obviously he was one of the best to come through LSU. So uh, Deshaun McBride, part of a, a safety, you know, group for Kerry Cooks that is pretty deep as far as their talent pool goes with who they're recruiting. Is Xavier Phil Same out of McKinney just dropped his uh, top five or top six. LSU made the cut, Georgia, Florida, Oregon, a couple others. Um, he's a top 50 overall prospect. They're obviously after Joel Rogers, who's an in-state safety. Uh, they have Maurice Williams committed. They have Wallace Foster as a nickel. Uh, you know, Kerry Cooks is is doing a really nice job here. And I like I like the offer of Deshaun McBride when, when they extended it. And now, obviously, the picks are flying in, and it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I think that if you start with a guy like Maurice Williams, who's certainly one of the best safeties in Texas, you have now offered the two local safeties, Joel Rogers, uh, up in the Felicianas, um, and then now Deshaun McBride at Denham Springs. Those guys are close to Baton Rouge. You want to lock them up. You want to keep Maurice Williams, and then you've got to continue to build from there. Could there be other guys in Louisiana? Maybe, but there are other safeties. You mentioned some there. Joshua Lair is another. Um, we could sort of go down the list, but I do think that they need to have at least, at the least, Billy, three pure safeties in this class. I think they go higher than that number just because they don't have a ton of depth there, even with it, what they just brought in. So my magic number at safety is three, could go more, but I do think they're well on their way to 
to setting themselves up to come away with a strong haul. Yeah, I agree with you completely. There's a lot of lot of um, you know fishing lines in the water for Kerry Cooks, and and that's a good thing. Um, you know, he signed Ty, uh, Kylan Jackson, one of the best in the country. Sign, you know, Robert Steeple signed JV and Toviano. He could play some safety. There's there's a lot of versatility. Uh, which is good. Stamps. Kind of, yeah, yeah. Guys Ashton Stamps. It, it, all those things just kind of help the room long term. Maybe flesh itself out in the in the right way. So um, they've got to continue to recruit all these guys. Yeah, I think it's important too because right now Brian Kelly has talked about that, Billy, that they're they have a lot of cornerbacks in the room, not a lot of safeties. And he said, look, we can move some corners to safety. I just don't know which ones yet. And we've talked about that on the pod. He's had the ability to watch high school film for all those years and still says, hey, I see value in both. Last year we saw Jarrett Bernard Converse play both positions for LSU as a transfer. And then Today, LSU Pro Day, um, or I guess this week, LSU Pro Day, uh, Jay Ward uh, jumped. I think he had like an 11-1 broad, uh, which is insanely good. Uh, really good athlete. And he played corner. He played safety. He played nickel. He did everything in Baton Rouge. So I like some of these guys who are a bit versatile. Yeah, and that size can help them too. I mean, Makai Garner, you know, those guys that are just physically bigger, I mean, they can get in the way of some guys a little bit easier with that size and length, whether – you can stick them at corner, stick them at safety, um, whatever you want to do with them. Shade, probably the biggest visitor that's going to come through LSU this week, this weekend, actually hit campus on Tuesday. Um, Five-star offensive tackle, Jonathan Daniels out of Pensacola Pine Forest, made his way to Baton Rouge. This was kind of a long-awaited visit, one that had been put off because of um, the Under Armour Orlando camp, which he had to compete in and all of those things. And now he finally was able to swing through Baton Rouge. This is a massive target for Brad Davis. He sits there um, on on three as a top 10 prospect, the number one offensive tackle in the country, a top 150 prospect on the on three industry ranking. I really like the upside of John Daniels. I like that Brad Davis is swinging away at a guy like this. You know, they got to get him back for another practice for a practice. Um, he was there, uh, you know, chumming it up with Kim Mulkey, um, Angel Reese, uh, Didi Bro. He was really taking in the big send off for, you know, the women's team. And I think they did a good job. It wouldn't shock me if he took an official visit, but you got to just keep getting this guy back to campus. He's only a few hours away. Yeah, you look at that on three ranking, it obviously stands out from the rest. We have him as the number one offensive tackle in America at 6'5", 285. These are obviously the kind of guys you want to get. Now, Florida State, heavy leader on the RPM. He's from Pensacola. But LSU's done a good job recruiting him, and that's come from Jonathan Daniels. He has said, hey, look, Brad Davis has been on me from the start. Um, you see Charles Cross, a pretty good comp there, a guy who ended up coming out of Mississippi State and being a top 10 pick. But I will say, too, you mentioned you have to get these guys onto campus for it to become a reality, to really be after these top 10, 20 guys in the country, regardless of position. And I'm looking at the top 10 players right now. The number two player on on three, Williams Winery, uh, they had him on campus already. I know they've had Ellis Robinson on campus already. He's the number four player. Colin Simmons has been on campus more than he's visited any other school. He's a top five player. Micah Hudson's a guy who's sort of been on the radar for a long time for LSU, uh, but right behind him at number nine, Jonathan Daniels, now making that visit this week. K.J. Bolden, the top 10 player at safety, has been around. So it's been impressive to see, do they get all these guys, Billy? I don't know. Recruiting is, I got nine, 10 more months till signing day. It's fluid. It's too early to know, but you don't have a shot if you don't get them to campus. And this staff has done a very good job of getting high-end guys to campus. Yeah, I completely agree. They've, they've done that in droves. And that's what you want. You want guys to at least step on campus. If they like it. They'll schedule an official or they'll come back. You know, these guys start taking visits so early in their careers. John Daniels was actually in attendance for LSU Florida State. He was also in the stands for LSU Alabama, too. So, He's been around. He's experienced Baton Rouge on a game day um, and obviously a really good game to pick as well. Uh, but now he told me at the Under Armour Orlando camp, his biggest thing that he's watching for this spring are making it in for practices. So he had a great visit. He met, you know, Kim Mulkey, did all of these things. 
but he's also got to catch practice. And I think that's where the next step comes is, hey, come back, come watch us practice. Let's get, you know, hopefully you can come in the night before and um, then wake up and be at practice since they're doing the morning practices. Let's do that. And then you can, you know, be on your merry way. And you have seen what it's like to be coached by Brad Davis, which is one of the most important things for him. So um, that was a huge target to get on campus. Yeah, I should have specified first visit this spring, but yes, um, about as big. I mean, number one offensive tackle, it doesn't get much bigger than that, unless you've got the number one quarterback or number one edge rusher on campus, and they are in the mix for pretty much all of those type of guys. So exciting recruiting process. Um, but Billy, they have what? One offensive lineman committed uh, for this cycle in Kyrie Lee Jr. He's an in-state guy. We know that they're going to go have to go out of state. Brad Davis did it last class, and he, and he got a couple of good players out of Georgia. You mentioned a guy like John Daniel in Florida. I wonder where do they turn from here? We've picked up on some names. I'm curious of the guys who visited, the guys that you know Brad Davis is really on, who we should be watching, because I feel like when you and I wrote the rundown before, we've got a handful of names here, uh, and I'll let you go through some of them. A number of them both landed on our uh, Mach 1.0 prediction pieces, if anyone wants to check those out. But I don't think either of us had this guy on the list, but I feel like one of the very first players we talked about LSU being involved with came out of Beaumont on the border in Weston Davis. And Alabama leads the way on the on three RPM. a and obviously a team that's going to be in the mix there, but where do we think LSU stacks up? Because I feel like from talking to people, sources around the LSU program, they think they're in it just as much as those other teams might be. Yeah, I, I think LSU is certainly in it for Weston Davis. And and he might end up coming to campus this weekend. He's got a basketball tournament, might not be able to make it happen, which is what you want to see too. I mean, multi-sport guy, um, Weston Davis and you know, one of those guys who's ranked, you know, the top 75 overall players in the country for on three. I love his frame. I think being in Beaumont, I mean, that certainly helps. You know that a and is going to swing big for him. You mentioned Alabama. Alabama leads the on three RPM right now because I, I believe that's his only official visit scheduled. So uh, that does play a factor. But Weston Davis is going to get by this spring at some point. Uh, it's just getting you know through with that basketball schedule to uh, get him onto campus. He's going to be one of Brad Davis's top priorities. You know, John Daniels is. Um, we'll talk about a couple other guys at offensive tackle spot, but Weston Davis is one where I think he's going to take an official visit. I think LSU will be right there at the end of his recruitment. It's just a matter of hey, move that needle um, and really catapult yourself into that top, top, top contender. He just dropped his. Uh, Top six as well. LSU made the cut. So he's they're, they're right there for securing that official visit already. And it's no surprise. I mean, if you, depending on how fast you're driving um, to Beaumont, but if you've got a kid that's two and a half hours away and is rated as a top 100, number six offensive tackle, and you are one of his first early offers, I don't, if I'm Brad Davis, I don't care what an RPM says or if Bama's gotten him to campus or if AM's got a campus a bunch. I'm pedal to the you know, floor on him um, because that was a good early eval that now it's clear with a year left of football that he is one of the best prospects available. And he, and he remains uncommitted. Yeah, no question. I think they were offered number like three or something. Yeah, they were one of the first. Yeah, one of the first. I mean, just really, really good eval. Another guy who you know fits that mold uh, of what you want to see when it comes to offensive tackles and you know their uh, size, frame, 6'7", 285, out of San Marcos, Texas, right in between Austin and San Antonio. Shout out to our listeners over there. Um, Ori Williams, uh, a guy who, look, right in Longhorn country, certainly going to be a very difficult pull. I believe he's got a couple predictions in. We can check right now. Um, to land at Texas, he's got one from Jerry Hamilton from our Texas site. Um, you can see there. But another guy that it wouldn't shock me if LSU got him to campus here relatively soon um, is Ori Williams, another top, you know, 100 offensive tackle kind of slept on, in my opinion, just a little bit. I think he should be a little bit higher in our eyes, at least. But um, that frame is really what you want. And, you know, he's kind of just forgotten about kind of in that that little corridor between San Antonio and, and Austin. Is it tough to float the river at 6'7", 285? 
<laughs> you get enough of those uh, uh, floats you, under you. I, I you mean, tie them together, depends. I guess. You know, it, it just depends. I mean, sometimes uh, I feel like the cooler I bring is around two hundred and eighty-five pounds. So uh, you know, so it's possible. It, it's possible they have the special uh, cooler floating uh, floats. So I, if Ori Williams can float, my cooler can float, then it can float. You know. Might be tough for his friends to flip him too. Like, <laughs> yeah, we're yeah, no question like about over. that. Um, another guy that we're going to hit on here, and we've talked about him because he's visited. Uh, he's not an offensive tackle, um, but uh, Casey Poe is uh, the number one interior offensive lineman in the country. He's been to campus. He's already planning his return. I think LSU's catapulted themselves right into the mix here with the East Texas offensive lineman. It feels like, well, if you're listening to this on Apple, which we were running analytics, Billy, you and I, we're Spotify people, but boy, do a lot of people listen to us on Apple. Um, yep. So keep that up. But if you're listening on or watching on YouTube, uh, you're getting to experience this with us. Billy's running through graphics and giving us visuals here. We're at a theme. On three keeps ranking all these guys LSU likes higher than anybody else. So maybe there's not an LSU bias out there. Uh, they got Casey Poe to campus. He was the number one offense. They had our rankings already came out. So when he had come to campus, he was the number one interior offensive lineman in the country. I don't know, Billy, does the kids from Lindale, Texas, is that a pipeline to anywhere? I know that OU has been considered the early front runner, um, but it seems like from talking to people around LSU, they felt like that visit was going to secure them an official visit. They felt like he was engaged. His family's now been engaged. Their dialogue is open. And Brad Davis considers him a big priority. Yeah, I would think Texas A&M, um, TCU's done a real good job, Oklahoma. Um, I mean, honestly, just kind of like the RPM reads a little bit. Uh, that is, you know, really, I think at least. And then, you know, Texas Tech is, is getting in there more and more with um, Joey McGuire being a Texas high school coach. A lot of those East Texas coaches are really big on, you know, trusting the you know, coaching staff, and obviously that'll play a role in it here. But yeah, Casey Poe, I mean, he's somebody who's very high on Oklahoma. It's going to be a battle for LSU um, to pull him out of there. But I'm with you. I think they position themselves really well. And they have, uh, you know, a couple really elite offensive linemen coming in this weekend as well. Yeah, and look at with Casey Poe, too, before you uh, you can jump off the screen. That doesn't matter. It doesn't say it right there. But uh, of note, if you went to a scouting page, you would see that uh, he won his Texas State title in the shot put last year. He was a sophomore, so his junior track season is on go right now. We'll see what happens when uh, they get to outdoors and he's throwing the shot put again in the spring. But uh, potential back-to-back -back state title winner in the shot put, which I say that because it is a very, for NFL terms and college coaches, anyone, that is a good tool for them to know uh, a number of different things about an offensive lineman. Uh, he's one that we really like. And obviously, on three named him number one for a reason. Yeah, shuttles and uh, shot puts. Uh, just good hip flexibility, lateral quickness, all of those things. Shay, two visitors. We mentioned them. We teased them. Uh, Ethan Calloway, 6'7", 300 pounder, uh, coming in from North Carolina, a top 100 overall prospect, uh, according to On3. Uh, he's fresh off a North Carolina visit in there, too. NC State's, you know, in the mix heavily. Um, this is another one that Brad Davis is just shooting for the stars. We saw this last cycle where Brad Davis, probably out of all the position coaches, you know, maybe even adjusted for number of spots in your room or on the field, so to speak. He probably had the most top end talent hit campus out of anyone on staff throughout the recruiting process. Well, and the trend continues. Um, Given a little bit away, you should still join the Bengal Tiger. We're run, running promos all the time. So if you love the podcast, we were actually hanging out all day and report a lot more than just the podcast on the Bengal Tiger. So catch us on the On3 Network. If you're not subscribed yet, do so. Um, but I had Ethan Calloway in my class prediction piece, my Mach 1.0. Uh, and it was no in, in, inside intel other than I know Brad Davis likes him a lot. Like I know the staff likes him a lot. And I knew this visit was coming up and he's the number eight offensive tackle in the country. And I'm looking at an RPM for a North Carolina kid. So an East coast kid that's got NC state, Virginia tech, South Carolina. So the East coast school is very prevalent. 
can an out, you know, can a Southeast, you know, a Louisiana type uh, get into the mix? I think this weekend will uh, tell us plenty there, but boy, six, seven, 300. That is just what you want. I, he's a guy, as I said, trend continues on threes higher on him than any of the other services right now. I think he looks like a really good prospect. Yeah, I do too. And uh, we'll give away one more visitor here and we'll kind of tee up the rest of the junior day um, later on in the podcast. But uh, coming out of Mississippi, Isaiah Autry will be on campus, uh, 6'7", 285 or 275. Um, another guy that on three has hired, not necessarily a four-star guy just yet, but uh, he's heavily in the mix to be one. Uh, Ole Miss, Mississippi State are going to be tough to battle here. But uh, as we saw here um, with the safety, uh, Isaac Smith. There uh, you go. There you go. I was Michael wondering if you were going to be able to put it. that together. You know, you know you're married to the game uh, in a sense uh, when you're remembering uh, guys you've already put in your past. But, uh, yeah, Isaac, Isaac Smith from last recruiting cycle, same high school here. Yeah, he's an Itawamba guy, and LSU was in it till the very end. And what do you know? Isaac Smith stayed home, went to Mississippi State, right? Yes, he did. Give, me Ole, Miss or, give me Ole Miss or State here early on, but we'll see what Brad Davis can do. Yep. Um, well – uh, I'll tell you what, Brad Davis uh, will probably, I'm just kidding, this is a bad transition for that one, but after a long <laughs> recruiting weekend, uh, you might want to check out rogueshop.com uh, to relax, to uh, get some rest. Uh, if you have problems with insomnia or any pain or you know just stress in general, our friends at rogueshop.com, promo code BENGLETIGER gets you 10% off your order Richard and Shar, veteran-owned business here, so support them. Um, they've got tons of options for our uh, Bengal Tiger subscribers. You know, when it comes to CBD, um, Delta Eight, Delta Nine, uh, and they've got a bunch of diff different products, Shay, to uh, help you with those issues of insomnia, uh, sleep, you know, sleep issues, pain, and all those things. Uh, yeah, two things. One, um, the dog, different dog elements of it seem to be working. It's still too early for me to maybe truly tell because my dogs are a bit wild. Um, Lundy did not make an appearance on the pod today. I think she's outside doing something. Uh, but I did have my friend John order a number of things, uh, including uh, some of the vape carts, which he said was really good. And he was able to get the card as well as the battery and all that right there on the side. He said it came quick. His promo code worked. Um, so just another happy customer who said that he got his 10% off and, uh, seamless and everything is, uh, kind of rocking for him. And, um, I will also say, Billy, you're or again, if you're not, if you only listen to us on Spotify and YouTube and I look, I, I listen to Spotify most of the time. That's pretty much, I don't watch a lot of YouTube, <clears throat> but if you're watching on YouTube last uh, episode, Billy's, uh, hockey scar was a lot worse than it is now. I'm just curious if we've been rubbing any rogue shop on that. Billy took a high stick to the face uh, the other day in hockey. And boy, I've seen the video. We're not going to release it, but it was rough. It was a cheap shot. Uh, and I got a feeling that next time these two teams meet, there's going to be some gloves thrown. thrown yeah, right I, down I, haven't, I haven't checked the schedule. I don't know the you know team that we play tonight uh, after we get done recording the pod, Shay. But um, yeah, I just try to... You know, just play as hard as I can, regardless of who the team is. But let me tell you, when I recognize those jerseys next time, um, there's there's going to be some some animosity in the air uh, in our in our little rink there. Um, but yeah, no, uh, no pain cream uh, for this one. Uh, just good old fashioned Neosporin. But uh, it was pretty darn sore, so I did use some of the pain cream just kind of to relax my body. Um, after being pretty jacked up over, uh, it was a it was a cheap trip, uh, and I went head first into the board, so it was nasty. Um, as Shay said, the video is not going to be released, but um, at our next Bengal Tiger subscriber meetup, maybe uh, try to put that out there. It was like those old EA uh, hockey games, like they were on like Super Nintendo, where like Billy got knocked out and he just went completely sprawl, and then like the blood starts pooling up, you know, off to the side. That's what. That's exactly what it felt like to me. Yeah, it was the only uh, reason I didn't know that. Uh, the only reason I knew you had made it was because you were the one sending me the video. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, luckily it happened at the end of the period. So, took a little seat uh, for the final minute or so, and then got back out there. It, it there was. You go. It ended up being out okay. So, uh, shout out Rogue Shop helped me sleep after that one. 
Promo code Bengal Tiger. Check them out, Rogue Shop. Back to our uh, rundown here. Uh, do want to kind of put a bow on that last recruiting weekend. LSU had a couple of key targets. We talked about Bryce Underwood earlier this month, the number one quarterback in the country on on three rankings. George McIntyre, the number three quarterback, according to on three in 2025. We'll get to those guys in a second who've both been on campus. But Shay, Jalen Crawford, one of the top cornerbacks in the country, was on campus this weekend. He got in Friday, then was able to take in practice on Saturday just before we hit the pod. I got off the phone with him. So if you're a Bengal Tiger subscriber, $10 for four months, you can check out the story that'll drop Thursday morning with Jalen Crawford's full reaction to his LSU visit. Uh, the Tigers are right in the mix with Clemson Tigers and the Auburn Tigers. So somehow he's going to be a Tiger from what it seems like. But um, I'll have his full reaction. But I do feel like LSU did a really nice job with his visit and he came away really impressed. Uh, yeah, this is a kid who's ranked as by the industry uh, as a top 15 corner in the class. He's had an offer for a while now. And we often say track what they do, not always what they say. And what he's done is been to LSU as much as he's been to any other campus. It's, and when it comes down to his top four teams, he's been to LSU and Georgia four times. Well, he doesn't have Georgia in his kind of what he's told Chad Simmons and on three and probably I don't know what he told you on the phone just now, but. He's maintained it's sort of been a top three and four, but it's been LSU, it's been Auburn, Clemson, Tennessee. You see the what every single one of those teams is right there on the on through recruiting prediction machine. LSU with a commanding lead, and there aren't even any picks yet in there. I think that's in large part because LSU's gotten a large chunk of his recent visits, whether that was dating back to last spring uh, into this year. Seems to just continue to keep coming back to campus. LSU will get an official visit. We know that they want Wardell Mack at corner in Louisiana. We know that there are a lot of a number of kids in Texas uh, that are on the cornerback board. When I look in Georgia, which is a state they recruit very well, I quickly land on a guy like Crawford as someone I would not be surprised at all if they got. Um, I don't have a pick in. I did put him in my recent uh, mock class 1.0 just because I feel like they've done a lot of legwork here and, Again, when you're in Georgia, you can end up at Clemson or Tennessee or Auburn and LSU, and, and it's all about the same, right? You know, LSU actually is probably a little bit further, but he's got access to all these schools. He's going to be visiting them. So not a slam dunk for me, but I won't be surprised at all if LSU wins out. Yeah, and LSU has Zion Ferguson, Ferguson committed out of Georgia. That's going to be a tough battle for them to hold on. Auburn's pushing for him pretty heavily for sure. They're also pushing for Jalen Crawford. It's going to be very interesting to see how this one ends up. You know, he really likes LSU. I mean, behind the scenes kind of tidbit. Over the summer, it was the 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 noise was real loud that he was going to commit early to LSU, uh, very early, and uh, ended up holding off. Now he's taking his visits. Uh, these three three schools are battling it out. Uh, but look, LSU is is in a good spot, and at this stage of the game, uh, that is just what you want. Um, they aren't stopping on the corner train, though. They are. Uh, continuing to evaluate other guys. And a new offer went out this week um, to top 50 overall prospect, Selman Bridges out of Lake Belton in the Temple, Texas area. This is a guy that I saw at the Under Armour Dallas camp. I mean, he is long. I mean, he is 6'4", and he moves around really well. You can tell um, he's one of the top corners in the country, even at that size. He really uh, moves around well. So LSU finally made the move and, and offered the number six corner in the country. Yeah. A little surprising seeing those rankings, five, you know, top five corner, number six and on three that, you know, consensus top 50 player on a couple of different sites that there wasn't an offer. in. usually when we hear about offers right around now, it's guys who are like three stars and they're kind of on the come up. It seems like Bridges has kind of been there. So maybe they can jump into the mix. I don't know if it's too late or if a temple kid sticks around and goes to Texas or A&M or Baylor, but, It'll be interesting, interesting to see. See if they can't get him to campus soon. No question. Um, before we jump into the – we're going to each pick a prospect. We're, quote, unquote, excited about LSU getting to campus um, off the visitor list. Um, but we do want to touch on two quarterbacks. Um, and Shay will lead off with um, Bryce Underwood. Um, and drop, drop the tidbit uh, on the number one quarterback in the country, the number – 
one player in the country for on three in our new rankings. Uh, LSU is pushing to get him back on campus, and it might be sooner than we think. Yeah, I mean, what was the date? April 22nd, I think, yep. is when? The spring game weekend. Not going to be much of a spring game, obviously. But he visited in early March, so this will give them two visits in two months. That's a big deal. You'll start to see LSU surge there on the on three RPM. I do think that being a Michigan kid, you have to look very hard at Michigan and Michigan State as being threats to the end. When we've asked around, a lot of people said, okay, if he doesn't go to the SEC, Ohio State might be the team to beat. We'll see if that uh, is true as time plays out. But getting him back to campus is key. Joe Sloan has done great here. He's swinging for the fences in 2025. These kids just wrapped up their sophomore year. You just had George McIntyre on campus for the third time. He's the number three quarterback in the country on the on three industry ranking. Now you've got a guy like Bryce Underwood, who is the consensus number one quarterback and the number one overall player on on three um, back to campus again, twice in two months. That's a big deal. There's a look at McIntyre. Okay. McIntyre is the number two on the industry ranking. So the number one and two players at quarterback in the country, you were able to pretty consistently get to campus. And once Underwood visits, he'll have visited LSU more than any other school this spring. And McIntyre has visited LSU three times since the Bama game, which he was in the stands to see that overtime win. I We've touched on it on the pod. Long way to go with these guys. I don't know if they get them. If they do, it's one of the biggest quarterback, you know, coups they've had out of high school in program history. I mean, there's only so many times you've landed a number one or number two overall quarterback. It's happened, but – it's not a ton. So these would be major, major splashes. And until these dominoes fall, I think that's where the focus is going to be. I think it, or at least until they realize Joe Sloan realizes, Hey, we're not getting these guys. Then they'll move on until then. I think they're putting the full court press on. That's why we're seeing them get Bryce Underwood back to campus again, instead of making, let's say, offering the number four and five quarterbacks and then starting to get them in for visits. He is honing in on these two. Yeah, I think that's the right way to do it too. show that, you know, you really want these guys and, and stick with it. Hang in there. I mean, think about this, you know, Bryce Underwood, if he does end up coming back in April 22nd on April, April 22nd and George McIntyre's all already been back a couple of times. This is around the time last year that for like Dante Moore and Jaden Rashada, that they were just kind of making their first visits. At least Dante Moore was to LSU and then kind of things go awry but these guys have already been on campus or will potentially by the end of the spring be on campus multiple times that sets you up long-term to be very much in these recruitments. And so um, I like the way they've navigated it. Um, it's a long way to go. I think they're both uh, program changing type quarterbacks when you talk about their ability to come in and be the guy, um, which, you know, for better or worse, in a sense, LSU's always, you know, or at least as of late, has kind of gotten guys that have upside or have this, have that, but they're also missing that. We're seeing these guys in 2025 that they're in on this early be, I mean, not no-brainers, but, you know, Bryce Underwood sure looks like one. Yeah, I, I like what they're doing here. I've said it time and again, and we'll update you guys when they do make moves on other quarterbacks, but as every month passes, it sticks with these two, Bryce Underwood and George McIntyre. No question. And uh, mentioned picking out a visitor. Uh, Shay and I are very interested to see on LSU's campus this weekend. I'm going to go ahead and go first. Oh, okay. Well, then don't steal mine. Or do you – I don't think I'm going to steal yours. So okay. why don't you go first and I'll bring them up real quick. Okay. I'm going to do Dre Lott. Did I steal it? Nope. Okay. I'm doing Draylon Miller. Coming out of Silsby in Texas, this is a guy that Sam Spiegelman put in an on three RPM pick for last week. We know that LSU is probably battling A and M as the team that could keep him in Texas or has the best shot to keep him in Texas. I've heard him mentioned as a Debo Samuel type. I know he's listed at athlete, but LSU's recruiting him at receiver. They think they could use him in a variety of ways. That's what they're selling him on. As you see, he is a top five athlete in the country, top 100 player. I don't, I guess because for me, out-of-state kid, I just don't know where I am yet on 
LSU versus a and I need to keep digging more, but he stands out to me coming into the weekend because, all right, if LSU is a real player, can they create some you know momentum here? Can they create some distance here? Can they pop him this weekend? All of those things I'm watching uh, for a guy like Draylon Miller getting back to campus. Yeah, the good thing is Silsby is kind of like in between a little bit um, College Station and and Baton Rouge. So it's not necessarily a, a location-ish type of thing with him. Um, but I'll say this. I, I think A&M is the team, to, the team to beat, I mean, personally. I don't uh, think that's unfair. Yeah. And I mean, when you're one and two, I mean, but you're kind of like splitting hairs. I mean, it's just kind of whatever you think based on what you're, you know, hearing. Um, but it doesn't mean that LSU's out. It doesn't mean that AM is going to get them, but it's a battle. And um, I think LSU is going to have to really step up. And um, that's a guy that they've really circled in a big way as a target goes. He's a bigger body. Uh, he's got that basketball background too. Really talented basketball player has that basketball offer from LSU as well. But look, uh, Debo Samuel, I mean, is is what LSU wants to do with Draylon Miller. I'll raise the Debo Samuel thing. And I, I think, my guy, Terry Bussey, uh, out of Timpson, Texas, could be that Debo Samuel type. He plays defensive back. He plays wide receiver. He plays running back. I mean, he can do it all. I think he plays quarterback, actually, for Timpson. Uh, he's the number one athlete for on threes, top 13 or number 13 overall prospect in the country. Going to be a battle to get him away from Texas A&M. But th this is a kid that has really kind of slow played his recruitment overall. He hasn't really done many visits. This is a shot for LSU to really make some noise and to start building some momentum, and maybe it leads to an official visit. Okay, I like that pick. So hiring—that's that's my Debo Samuel. You, he can take the ball however many different ways you want him to. You one up me by picking the number one athlete in the country <laughs> instead of the number four athlete in the country. <laughs> I'll, I'll keep that in mind. Uh, and shout out, look, uh, uh, my high school alma mater is uh, having a player come in this weekend, Tampa Carrollwood Day wide out Bridell Richardson. So, uh, and he's another one to watch. He is another one to watch. He is, he's very talented. Um, he's a guy that, uh, Cortez Hankton's known for a long time. The head coach at CDS played with him, uh, played with Hankton while they were on the Bucks. So, um, an intriguing prospect. I'm, I'm, he's, he's got a ton of Notre Dame interest. As you see, the RPM, uh, has the Irish in the lead. Um, but that dates all the way back to when Brian Kelly was there. So, um, this is a prospect with a lot of familiarity with, a bunch of kind of different avenues when it comes to LSU. Well, this is why you need to be a member of the Bengal Tiger board and site because the board this week dropped the uh, throwback VHS Billy Embody High School highlights. I didn't see any Breedell Richardsons out there though. If he, if you would have had a Breedell Richardson, Billy, things could have been a little bit different. No, no, yeah, we we did not. We had a a, a bunch of guys that we had John Gruden's son. He was he was my slot. Um, so shout out Deuce. He's now a world power lifter and then oh. a bunch of other, other guys who were about five, seven. So, yep. um, yeah, it was, it was great. So it was nice. You know, the highlights, you see the high ball, but the college coaches were like, oh yeah, that guy was six feet. That'd be on the money. Right. Yeah. That guy was six, one, one ninety named Bradell Richardson. You would have yeah. caught that ball from Billy. Exactly. So anyway, don't go Googling that. Uh, you'll, you'll want to, uh, not, you know, watch any more highlights. Save your time. Yeah, good good playlist though. So yeah, right there it wasn't actually a dope playlist. You got a lot of love for that. Um, yeah. But yeah, stick around this weekend. Bengal Tiger Billy's already put up one visitor list. I'll have one up on Thursday with more names. We'll put a final one up on Friday. But this will be one of kind of the I'd say one of the top three visitor weekends they've had so far this year, which is a big deal. So a lot to pay attention to. Yep, absolutely. So. We're going to wrap this one up. Appreciate all you guys who subscribe to our YouTube channel. Over 3,300 of you guys subscribe to the channel. Um, we are continuing to add subscribers on the BengalTiger.com every day. Again, $10 for four months. You can also get your Bengal Tiger Founders Club hat. Uh, hadn't dropped it until now. Check out the instructions on the board on how to get them or, or DM us, email us um, on the site to uh, get your hands on those as well. It's about to be summer, about to be golf season for a lot of you. So, you'll need a fresh lid for uh, the golf course. So with that, I'm going to wrap this up. We'll have spring football uh, takeaways tomorrow on the podcast. Brian Kelly will talk. We'll have uh, practice availability and pro day takeaways. So 
be sure to uh, tune back in tomorrow afternoon, and we will run it all down for you guys on another edition of the Bengal Tiger podcast. Thanks for listening, everyone.